All right, let's look at the word. Mark chapter 3, one verse. No one can enter the strong man's... Let's start over. I want you to read it with me. And let's do it from the screen so we're all reading the same translation, okay? This is the New American Standard Bible. That way, in case you're reading something crazy like the message, we'll all be in harmony, okay? <laughs> but no one can enter the strong man's house and plunder his property unless he first ties up the strong man. And then he will plunder his house. Thank you, Lord, for the word. You can be seated. Ladies and gentlemen, we, we have a strong enemy. Make no mistake about it. Lucifer, the devil, number one, he is very real. Secondly, he's very powerful. Thirdly, he's very intelligent. He's been around a long time. He has witnessed the response of humanity. He has witnessed the tendencies of humanity. And he knows people. Amen. Now, he may not be dealing with you directly because he's not omnipresent. He can't be everywhere at all times. But he does have minions, <laughs> demonic spirits, principalities and powers, and rulers of the darkness of this world that abide in the spirit world that are there to oppress, depress, and aggravate the people of God. And that's what he's doing. He does it with anxieties and depression and confusion. That's how he works. And he's working overtime in these last days. When you think about the nations of the world and you think about uh, different countries and world leaders and how maniacal and crazy they really are. That's not people. That's the enemy of your soul. Amen. The Bible says in Isaiah 14, 12, the Lord through the prophet Isaiah talking about the devil, he said, you deceived the nations. And he's still doing that. He's still doing it. From the White House uh, all the way down, he's doing that. And I'll say it like it is. It's, that's what's happening in our country. It's not Joe Biden. It's the enemy of his soul. It's the enemy of our soul. It's principalities and powers and rulers of the darkness of this world. But it's not only on a government level. It's also in your home. It's in your marriage. It's on your job. It's in your daily life. The struggle is real, isn't it? Because you are up against a powerful enemy. Just as Pastor Silas said earlier, spot on. That young man is against evil forces he knows nothing about. And he's deceived. He's being locked into a place of darkness. And it's happening all around us today. It's happening. I want to look at Revelation 20, verses 1 through 3. And I just want to remind you of this Lucifer, the dragon, the serpent, the devil, whatever you call him. I want you to see his future. You ready? Then I saw an angel coming down from heaven, holding the key of the abyss and a great chain in his hand. And he took hold of the dragon, the serpent of old, who is the devil and Satan, and bound him for a thousand years. And he threw him into the abyss, shut it and sealed it over him so that he would not deceive the nations any longer. Now, and until the thousand years were completed. Now, this is after the seven years of tribulation. This is after the second coming of Christ. This is after Armageddon. This is at the culmination of that before the millennial reign of Christ, which is a literal 1,000 years. And literally, this isn't symbolic. This will physically happen one of these days. And I believe it's very soon in the future. I believe it. And he knows it. That's why he's turning up the heat. That's why he's trying harder to deceive you. That's why he's trying harder to pull you away from church. That's why he's trying harder to get your attention on things that really have no spiritual significance in your life. But this is his future. And it will physically happen. But I want you to see something in the spirit today. Because you're wrestling in the spirit world. Wednesday night I said there are three heavens. God's in the third heaven, right? Christ is at the right hand of the Father. The second heaven's the spirit world. We're in the first heaven. We're praying. 
when we pray, we're trying to pray through that second heaven where there's a lot of activity going on. That's why it's important that you never stop praying. In fact, when it gets harder and it gets worse and the heat is turned up, that's, the, that's when you need to pray the most. Not run away from God, not run away from God's house, not seclude yourself, but you have to get on your knees and cry out to the living God. I'm going to read 1 Peter. I don't think they have it, but I'm going to read it to you quickly. 1 Peter 5, verse 8 and 9. It says, Be of sober spirit. Be on the alert for your adversary, the devil, prowls around like a roaring lion, seeking someone to devour. And that someone is you today. But resist him. Did you hear what I said? Resist. Now, resist does not mean ignore. Resist him, firm in your, everybody shout, faith, Faith. knowing that the same experiences of suffering are being accomplished by your brethren who are in the world. In other words, everybody has this fight. But what separates people who walk and live in victory and in joy is the way they respond to it. I'm trying to teach my children now that attitude is the most important thing in your life. How you approach something says a lot about how it's going to end up for you. And it's the same way in the spirit. How you approach the difficulties, how you approach the enemy in your life is going to have a lot to do with the end result. He's out to destroy you. Now in our text in Mark 3, can we go back there for just a moment? Mark 3, the Lord Jesus says this. But no one can enter the strong man's house, plunder his property, unless he first ties up the strong man. Now, King James says, bind him. Everybody say bind. Bind. You must first bind the strong man. Now, tie up is, is a better translation, but I want to talk about binding and loosing. Jesus told the disciples, whatever you bind on earth shall be bound in heaven. Whatever you loose on earth shall be loosed in heaven. Now, there's church government, there's authority there, but this also applies in Mark 3 in the context of binding the evil one, binding the devil, binding spirits that are at work in your life. Well, pastor, how do you do that? Number one, prayer. Everybody shout prayer. Prayer. How many believe that God still answers prayer? But the word bind in the Greek actually means this, to take a chain and tie him up. So what the Lord is going to do to the devil physically, bind him with a chain, throw him into the abyss. You and I, we can do that spiritually now. Did you hear what I just said? I just changed your life right there. You can do in the spirit what the Lord will do in the physical. You can bind his hands and his motivation and his progress in your life. And not only your life, but the life of your family. The life of your community. And I believe when the church prays the life of their nation. Oh, I feel this in my soul. When you pray... You enter the spirit realm. Second Kings, go there with me. Second Kings, it'll be on the screen, I'm sure. I read this passage Wednesday night. We talked about angels. We talked about angelic hosts. We learned about angelology. It was a great study. Go back and listen if you want not here or didn't hear it. But I want to read this passage. We have here in Israel's history the prophet Elisha, the man of God, all right, Syria, the Syrian army, is coming to get not only Israel, but they're coming to get him. They want the man of God. And he's in the middle of it all. And he's got a servant with him, and he says these words. Now when the attendant of the man of God had risen early and gone out, behold, an army with horses and chariots was circling the city. Can you imagine this? Knowing that This is all for you. And they're coming to get you. They want you. 
the man of God. They want the king of Israel. They want the nation. I'm telling you, ladies and gentlemen, the enemy wants you. And if he can't get you, he'll go after your children. He'll go after your family. He'll go after your church family. That's what he'll do. And that's a good sign that you're on good playing field because <laughs> when you start praying, when you start fully giving your life to Jesus Christ, and I mean not halfway serving him, I mean fully living for God, the enemy's going to raise his ugly head in areas that you never thought you would have difficulty. That's what he'll do. He's after the man of God. And his servant said to him, this is hopeless. This is hopeless, my master. What are we to do? <laughs> you ever said that? You ever says, I, this seems hopeless. I don't know what to do. It won't go away. It keeps on. In fact, it's getting worse. You are fighting a spiritual battle. He goes on to say, and he said, do not be afraid. Do not fear. But those who are with us, are greater than those who are with them. Now, when we start talking about spiritual warfare, when you pray, go to the next verse. Elijah, what did he do? Shouted aloud. He prayed, and he said, Lord, please open his eyes so that he may see. Stay there. Stay there. Good job. Just stay there. Open his eyes that he may see. You, listen to me, when you pray this morning, I felt this. You have to see into the spiritual before you can see in the natural. Because in the natural, it looks hopeless. In the natural, it looks like it's all over. In the natural, it looks like it's over. But if you can see this morning, that's what I want you to do. I want you to see in the Spirit so that you can believe to see it in the natural. But Elisha was praying that his servant would see in the Spirit so that he could know that everything was going to be all right in the natural. Go to the next verse. He prayed, and then the next verse, and the Lord opened the servant's eyes. Not his physical eyes, his spiritual eyes. Praying is a spiritual thing. And when you pray, you are fighting against principalities and powers, spirits that are out to destroy you. And the old timers used to say it like this. They says, you've got to pray through. Well, you haven't heard that in a while. You've got to pray through. Come on, amen. What did, what did they mean by that? Pray through the spirit realm into the heavenlies where Jesus Christ sits at the right hand of the Father. Now, sometimes that happens immediately. For Daniel, it took 21 days. Now, would you pray for 21 days? You might have to. It might be that type of warfare that you just have to keep hanging on. You know what that's called? That's called faith. That's not called being hopeless. That's not called being desperate. That's called walking by faith, holding on to the confession of your faith that you believe what God has said. He opened the servant's eyes and he saw... And behold, the, I love this, the mountains was full of horses and chariots of fire all around Elisha. He said, this is a big Syrian army, and it was thousands, if not millions of troops. But when the servant saw into the spirit, he realized at that moment that there's more with us than there are with the enemy. I'm here to tell you today that there's more with you than the enemy against your soul. You might have the devil of anxiety and depression and a suicide spirit and a lying spirit that's trying to grip your heart, but I'm telling you that the spirit and the power of God and the angelic hosts of the army of heaven is on your side. Hallelujah! But you have to see into the spirit to believe that. Pray. Yeah. Secondly, the Word of God. Yeah. How do you bind the devil? Prayer yeah. and the Word of God. Yeah. <laughs> the Bible. I sat here convicted this morning. I've had, tr glory to God, my knee feels great, by the way. 
I sat here this morning, and since September, playing football on the beach, thinking I'm a sprinter, I woke up the next morning, could not move my leg. I don't know what I did. <laughs> it hadn't gotten any better. I know that. And it's aggravating. You ever been aggravated? I sat here convicted. Sandra read that passage. Hold on to the confession of your faith. Now, I've been thinking about going to the doctor, and I've been thinking about what they could do and what I can do and icy hot. I thought to myself, you know what? I haven't laid hands on myself the first time. And I've got a class in seminary right now, Christology. And right now we're talking about African Christology. How that in Africa, it's a lot different over there. They don't have medical science like we do. They don't have a, a EMS or a, a health care place on every corner, prime care. They don't have that everywhere. They don't have two great hospitals in their own backyard like we do. They don't have it. So they are forced <laughs> to believe the Word of God. And that's why when you go over there, you see some crazy things happening. You see people being healed. I've heard that people have witnessed tumors actually leap out of bodies. And we say, what? But I'm telling you, if you will dare to believe God's Word... Sometimes he puts you in the same place as those African brethren because you need to be in a spot where you have to believe the Word of God. The Bible will never come alive until you have to believe it and hold on to it. But that's how you bind the devil. With prayer. Oh, I feel this today. Prayer in the Word of God. In fact, Jeremiah 33 and verse 3, the prophet said, Call unto me, and I will answer thee and show thee great and mighty things, which thou knowest not. In 1 Corinthians 12, Paul talks about the gifts of the Spirit. And there's one. In fact, I'm going to test you. Somebody name them off to me. There's nine of them. Gifts. Nope, that's fruit. Gifts. Word of knowledge. Word of wisdom. Prophecy. Huh? Gifts of healing. That's four. Say that again. Hold on. Hold on. You said it. Say it again. Discernment of spirit. I heard discernment four or five times. Sorry. But he said it correctly. Discerning of spirits. What spirits? principalities and powers that work in your life my good God you have to discern what type of spirit you are up against the Bible talks about several spirits there's a spirit of fear there's an anxious spirit there's a spirit of depression Solomon talks about it, the emptiness that you feel when you go after the things of this world. They call it a vexation spirit, a vexing spirit, which is a depressing spirit. There's a spirit of anger. Luke 5, there's a spirit of infirmity, sickness and malady in your life. There's a spirit of anger listed in the Bible, a spirit of jealousy, a spirit of, uh uh-oh, Laziness. Now, if anything has plagued this nation recently, it's the spirit of laziness. Pure laziness. There's a spirit of suicide. Why do you think that demoniac of Gadara was cutting himself? That spirit was trying to take his life. What type of spirit are you fighting? There's a spirit of lack. Financially, <laughs> lacking, spirit of quitting. The book of Acts talks about a spirit of divination. Now we know you may not have called the tarot card readers, but maybe you read Harry Potter. Maybe you watched the movie. It's the same thing. It's just covered under something else. 
He's a tricky devil. How about the things you watch on TV? Paranormal activity. Horror films. All this garbage that is nothing behind it but a spirit of divinity. And it will destroy you. How do you bind these spirits? Well, first you have to discern them. And that takes prayer. There's also a spirit in Revelation called the pharmakia spirit. We get our word pharmacy from that. The root Latin word of that Greek. The uh, talking about, in, in the book of Revelation, the seducing spirit. That's a spirit of pharmakia. Now, I'm not against medicine. Medicine's great. Doctors are great. I'm talking about drug addiction. The, the wave in America about marijuana being, oh, it's a good thing. Nobody's ever beat their wives smoking marijuana. If I hear that again, I'm going to throw up. <laughs> and people say, well, it is from the ground, you know. <laughs> well, guess what? My Bible said this ground is cursed. Yeah. I've had enough of it. Excusing this and excusing that when there are spirits at work and it's time that we instead of giving in to these spirits <laughs> and allowing them to play in our lives that we bind them Amen. how do we do it somebody tell me number one prayer, prayer. secondly prayer. the Bible believe the Bible my God I felt that this morning we had people up here believing what God says God, I wish we could get back to that more. <laughs> I'm, I'm staying there. I'm not letting it go. I'm holding the confession of my faith. Amen. And I'm believing God's word. Amen. Glory. Thirdly, in the name of Jesus. Amen. I can remember growing up and being in altar services, sort of like what we do. And I can remember men and women praying and binding the devil. And in my mind, I always thought, well, we bind him here, bind him in the whole world. What are we doing? You know? But then I learned something. That the Lord has given you a territory. He's given you an inheritance. When Israel went into the promised land, he allotted them land, and there were dividing lines. He's allotted you responsibility over your children, for your spouse, over your home, over your family, over your church family. You hearing what I'm saying? He's allotted you that. Amen. And that's where you have to focus. Don't spend your time trying to bind the devil in the Middle East. He's at work. They're letting him work. He's going to keep working. But I want to tell you what you can do. You can walk into your child's bedroom, spread yourself across that bed, and say, in the name of Jesus, I bind this spirit of confusion. I bind this spirit of oppression. I bind this confusing and anxious spirit. I bind this spirit of divination. You can walk across the hall. When you can't sleep, pray. When you cannot sleep, pray. I learned that, listen, the Bible says he will give his beloved sleep. So if you don't have it, guess what he wants you to do? He probably wants to talk to you a little bit. So pray. Bind the spirits in your life, in your home. Let's raise your hands and praise him. I tell you, I feel like I could pick up about 10,000 devils right now. Hebrews chapter 2. Therefore, since the children share in flesh and blood, that's you and I, we're flesh people. When we're saved, we become spirit people, which means we walk and live in the spirit, right? He himself, likewise, also partook of the same. That's Christ. He became one of us. 
He gave up privileges of heaven and became a man. That he might, that through death, the death on the cross, he might destroy the one who has the power of death. That is the devil. Now listen, hold that there. Not just physical death. Listen to me. The Bible says in Romans 6, 23, the wages of sin is death. Anytime, let me teach you something. Anytime you see death in the New Testament, it always means separation from God, not cessation of life, because we will all face cessation of life physically, but we will live forever. You will never die. Your body may take its last breath, waiting the resurrection, but your spirit soulish man will be either with the Lord or in a place of torment, and they call it hell. Not purgatory, not a holding place. Hell, where flames are real, heat is real, and the separation from God is real. It's real. But what I want you to see is that Jesus, everybody shout his name. That Jesus Christ, by becoming us, took our sin, our pain, our mental anguish. You hear me, Donna? He took it. He took a crown of thorns so that you could be healed in your mind. Glory to God. They offered him the, uh, uh, a little bit of medicine while he was on the cross. And the gospel said he just turned his head because he didn't want to numb your pain. He was taking all of your pain, all of your malady and malfunction and disease and sickness on his body. And he destroyed the one. Who's the one? That strong man, the powerful devil. But you cannot go into the strong man's house. Luke chapter 20, what, what I, whatever I gave you. Luke 11, listen to this. This is Luke's version. When a strong man, fully armed, guards his own house, his possessions are secure. Whew, I'm about to shout. But when one stronger than he, <laughs> glory to God, attacks him and overpowers him, that man takes away his armor on which he had relied and distributes his plunder. What's that saying? When you go into the strong man's house, you're not going by yourself. You are not the strongest man. You are not the strong man overpowering the devil. It is the Lord Jesus Christ who said, I am he that liveth and was dead, and behold, I am alive forevermore, and I have the keys of death, hell, and the grave. Hold on. How do you bind the devil? Word of God. In Jesus' name. So when you pray, start binding me, Spirit. Just say, I bind you in the name of Jesus. I told a few this morning, that anxious spirit, bind that little devil in the name of Jesus. Yeah. Glory to God. <laughs> Somebody give me Jude. This is where we fail. And I'm going to help you. Did I give it to you? Jude 27, I think. Yeah. All right. A lot of times, I, you know, I'm reminded of the book of Acts where the sons of Sceva are trying, you, you remember this narrative where they try to cast out a devil and they end up getting their brains beat out and the, those devils rip their clothes off. <laughs> they said, we know Paul. <laughs> we know who that is. We know Jesus, son of God, but who are you? These guys were trying to do something on their own. You cannot, let me tell you, he, the devil, demonic spirits are stronger than you are. They're more powerful than your discipline. You cannot discipline yourself to quit. I don't care what anybody tells you. You do not, you cannot discipline yourself to quit. No matter how hard you, you might do good for a while, but if you're relying on the arm of the flesh, you will always fail and you'll go right back to that pit right back to that spirit that's influencing your life every single time but let me show you this I love this but Michael who is the archangel when he disputed with the devil 
and argued about the body of Moses. So you know Moses died. He wasn't able to go into the promised land, right? Nobody knows where he's buried, where his body is. He did not dare to pronounce against him an abuse of judgment, but said simply, the Lord. He didn't say, I rebuke you. I'm Michael, the fighting archangel. He's given me the power to overpower you. But he said, the Lord rebuke you. <laughs> so the next time you pray and you feel like it's not getting any better, it's getting worse, and you've been binding the devil, you've been confessing the word and holding on to the word, won't you try this one? So instead of saying, I rebuke you, you don't have any power. Why don't you just say, the Lord rebuke you, devil? The Lord binds this spirit. Because by Jesus and his life, you have the authority to speak on his behalf. That's why he said, whatever you ask the Father in my name, I will do it that your joy might be full. That doesn't mean putting his name at the end of your prayer. That means you are walking in the authority of Jesus Christ. So when you bind the devil and you pray and you stand on God's word, say, the Lord. Rebuke you, you lying spirit, you anxious spirit. The Lord.